All right, we're going to be looking at the Sega Genesis 2, um, taking, looking at taking care of the problems concerning the black screen of death, where you start it up, it gets power, the LED light, which is right here, the LED light comes on um, when you hook it up to the television. This one's already taken care of, so I'm going to show you which I, what I did to it after the fact. Um, but uh, what happened with this one was, was that I plugged it in, I got a brand new power supply, um, Everything was plugged in, uh, everything looked right, no frayed wires, anything like that. Uh, you turn it on, the red LED light comes on, but then the screen is just completely black. Um, had the cartridge in, wiggled the cartridge back and forth, left to right, you know, tried to do, wobble it around, make sure it could get contact. Got absolutely nothing from it. So we're going to open her up, and uh, apparently this is a, a common problem with this. Uh, this is the second generation Genesis uh, this is a problem, common problem with these, and so we're going to open it up and take a look at it and see what's going on. So this is all unscrewed already. Uh, for ease of taking apart, so you can see it's just a plastic case. Nothing special on the inside. No parts that fall out or anything like that. Don't push on anything to make them fall out. I didn't mess with anything here. Everything works perfectly fine, looks perfectly fine. Uh, second step is that it's got this heat shield on here, so we're going to take that out too. And then this is the main board. Now all the screws for holding the board in are holding in the heat shield to this guy over here. So while this is on, um, the the main board's not going to be able to come off. So once you get the screws out of the screws out of the main holes, uh, the uh, the motherboard will be for the most part detached to there's only two screws after this that need to come out and both of them are on either side of the game input right here and then once you've got those two screws out then the whole thing just pulls right out so let's see we're gonna take a look at this through the magnifying lens so we want to look at it through the magnifying lens and what we're looking for are looking at all the traces on this side and making sure none of the traces are broken um, the first problem, however, before even getting to fixing traces and things like that, the first problem was the obvious and apparent problem, which is the game input, uh, the cartridge input. So you can see right away, and getting better light here, um, you can see right away one of these is not like the others. And so that one right there, about the middle of the screen there, you can see... It's a little bit off. That one was completely green and oxidized. The rest of them had a fair amount of dirt on it, um, but that one in particular was oxidized completely. It was all green. You can see it's bent a little bit. It was uh, sticking in. It was stuck in, so it wasn't making contact with any of the games. Now, I did pull it out once and tried plugging the game back in after cleaning this, and it still didn't work, so there may have been one other thing that I did, and I'll show you that in a second. But... Um, for right now, uh, what I did to this was basically got an old credit card. This is uh, wet paper, so I think this is, I'm not sure if it's written on here or not, but I'm going to guess if I had to put a guess to it, this is either 800 or 1,000 grit sandpaper. And uh, all I did was just wrap it. wrap it around the end of the credit card like this. Um, at first I did put some alcohol on the end of the sandpaper, but then you just go right into the game input just like this and you can just stick it in there and it'll fit in there pretty snug. Um, I did that on the first few after I had gotten the majority of the oxidation off and the majority of the dust off. I took the credit card out and just used the sandpaper and that was good enough for kind of finishing touches so to speak. Um, now, where this one was oxidized, when I pulled this out, you could see that there was a spot of green right there on the sandpaper. So that's telling me, obviously, that what's making contact is actually just oxidation. But uh, you can see now that everything is clean. You can see it here, too. Nice copper color right in here. It's nice and brown. Um, this was old sandpaper, so this black here, I think that's probably like lacquer paint or something I was using during wood woodworking. So uh, I probably should have used a clean one, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Um... This is all nice and brown and copper color. That means that all these contacts are nice and clean, and it's going to touch the contacts on the game uh, game cartridge very well. Uh, I did, I used um, to get that 
pin in place. I just used a, so it's like an X-Acto knife. It's got a little needle end on it. I'm able to go in there and you can see how it is bent. That part is still not completely fixed. And there's probably not much I can do about that without just buying a whole new piece, which I don't really want to do at the moment. But um, this piece here, obviously it needs to bounce in and out. Uh, it needs to make sure that when you're looking at this, these should all be nice and level. This one sticks out just a little bit further, which is okay, because that means that it's definitely making contact. Um, and then, uh, of course, when I put the credit card in the sandpaper, and I want to make sure that when I look at that, that there's not a blank spot somewhere where something's not touching. But it was all touching, so we're all good here. Um, if I did have something else to nitpick about, I would say that as I look at the underside here, which I'm probably not going to be able to see at all, um, Maybe if I can shine a little light on there, maybe you can see it. Eh, not really. Uh, but anyway, at that point, of con oh, you can actually see it right there. Um, so it's over to the left about, I don't know, about six or six or eight pins in. You can see that there's a green one there. So that con where the contact is touching the board, uh, that's still oxidized. But apparently it doesn't matter because the board's working now. Everything's working. And I'll show you that in a second, too. Um... So flip over to the other side. So, oh yeah, so I did uh, check all the, you know, I clean everything off, the especially the, uh, yeah, before I get to the other side, before, uh, make sure that the area all the way around the uh, game input, this part right here, this is where the flaps are on the outside of the console. And so we want to make sure that this place is really, really clean because this is where most of the dirt and things are getting in there. And this in here was just completely filled up with like, dust and dog hair and things like that so i clean that off and um you just clean it off just using regular old uh isopropyl rub rubbing alcohol nothing special uh just a regular bottle of rubbing alcohol so it didn't dilute it or anything you just use it at full strength and uh, that should clean it off pretty well and you can see that the uh the board's pretty clean now it's probably if i wanted to nitpick like that stuff could probably be cleaned off and see where it's kind of dusty in there still but um a huge improvement compared to what it was for certain uh, going to this so uh, on this side so what I did was I want to look at all the traces make sure none of the traces are uh, cracked or worn or anything like that look at all the joints where the capacitors are touching the board and make sure that those things haven't wiggled and cracked or anything like that um, all the uh, uh, all the resistors and everything, same thing, look at the resistors and make sure that the resistors aren't cracked, that the wires aren't cracked, that they're coming in contact with the, with the uh, circuit board and everything. Um, LED light was working perfectly fine, no problems there. So flip over to the other side. And I want to start with the controller inputs. And look at the contacts there. All the contacts are not cracked. I want to make sure that there's nothing that's either oxidized, it's grayed, or uh, looks like the uh, uh, the lead that's going through the circuit board hole and has the solder on it, that that's not cracked away from the solder. So all the solder joints are all perfect. These all look good. This board is actually really, really clean. Everything looks really good compared to some other, other ones I saw uh, just searching online. Um, the next one that we want to look at is the... Uh, video input and where are we at? There we go. Uh, the video input and the power input. Um, so you can see this is the video input here, which is that goofy pins there. You can see that guy's a little bit worn too, but everything seemed to check out all right. So all the all the contacts, all the leads, and everything all look really really good. All the solder joints are still intact. Um, the power adapter, though, is a different question. The power adapter would rock back and forth when it was inside, so you could, once you put the adapter in, the adapter had a fair amount of wiggle to it. Uh, when you pulled the adapter out, when I took the board out, this thing was cracked. And you can see there's, uh, you got three main inputs there. One, two, three, and you can see this one is cracked away a little bit. This one was all right, but still had a little bit of a crack on there. So all I did, um, basically was just take some, uh, just took some, uh, some lead writer on there, um, and, uh, just filled that in a little bit. Uh, the better thing to do, obviously, the right thing to do would be to get out the solder iron and fix that solder joint there. Because you can see, and this has got a fair amount of light on it, maybe too much light. 
you can see the crack that's going around it and that's all, almost all the way around the uh, almost all the way around the um, the connector from the the pin the pin from the uh, uh, power input so um, I did just fill that in with just some uh, um, some lead writer and that worked just fine everything's working fine uh, over here on let's see on this side on this side I had quite a number of leads here that where you can see that the solder is just completely cracked off it's missing and so I just wrote that in I don't know if it actually does anything I'm not an electrician not a they don't do any kind of electrical work or anything like that so um, I don't know if these things actually do anything but what I do know is that there's solder there are solder leads there and some of them were orange where you could tell that the solder had cracked off and so I just wrote the solder in with that same solder with that same uh, um, circuit writer pen uh, and I just did that all the way down like I said I don't know if it actually did anything or not but some of these are pretty messy I tried to clean them up with a knife but didn't work too well just as long as they're not coming in contact with each other we don't want them touching each other and having a bridge or something like that but that was about it um, I did check uh, the other thing that obviously if you've got a problem with the um, with the game input then you want to check all of these pins on the back these all looks perfectly fine all the solder joints are still intact nothing's cracked or anything it's all nice and silver no corrosion no oxidization all the uh, all the leads or all the uh, um, uh, all the circuit lines, all those are all still intact too. They're not, they're not um, cracked in any way or burned out or anything. No oxidization there, so everything looks pretty good. Uh, so we put it back in, and uh, give me one second, and we'll uh, plug this in. I can show you guys it just works just fine. Okay, so I got this guy all plugged in and everything. Um, this is the video line here, and this is the power line here. Um, and then this is the Sega adapter for this, the one that's going to match. We want to make sure that we're using the right adapter, obviously. This one is, where is that? That's two power supply. Model MK2108, or 210, I'm sorry, 2103. That's the right one. That's the one that we want to use. Um, I did kind of, unfortunately, as I pulled the Genesis out, I had always thought that this was the adapter, and try to plug it in it doesn't work this one is the uh, it says plug-in power supply for use with Genesis console so you would think this would be for Genesis but it's actually not this is for the Sega CD uh, which I don't have anymore but we apparently still have the power supply this model is 1602-1 and this is the wrong power supply so we want to make sure we got the right power supply that's this guy here picked it up for five bucks at a uh, used CD store so they're pretty re readily available and still pretty cheap if you can find one around. Uh, so we're going to go with uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I don't know why it says not for resale. Um, I don't know if that's a different kind or whatever, but whatever. Uh, one thing I did want to mention too is this, this just clicked on me. Um, I kept on calling these things leads and the right terminology is obviously traces. So don't get mad at me. I'm not an electrician, but uh, all these little lines in here, those are called traces in case I was confusing anyone. Um, so our contact is right here, our goofy contact, that one's right there, still seems to be all lined up and everything. So we're going to go ahead and stick the cartridge in there. Uh, when I did put this in, just in case I have to come back and fix it again or something like that, I didn't want to put everything back together again. So all I made sure to do was put these two screws back in so that way the whole board is at least um, being held down entirely. And this, is, this doesn't wiggle at all once these two are in there that holds the entire board completely in place. So we'll go ahead and put this in, and then uh, scare it. here's the power button. All right, so this is the power button here, and so basically a description of what, what it went wrong was I'm on the, this I'm not using an RCA input for this, this is the original RF input, uh, so this is going to actually go to the antenna input rather than using the RCA, the um, yellow, red, and white ones. So this is the original old school CRT input, and this, it works just fine. That's perfectly fine. This guy right here, I was holding the wrong one. This guy right here, this is the RF input. So um, that works just fine. But basically what was happening was is that you'd start off with a static screen, you'd hit the on button, and then you would just get black, and that was it with absolutely nothing else. So I'm um, going to press the power button. The power button is this guy right here. Reset button is this guy right here, just in case you've still got the top off and you can't tell which one's which. This is our power button. And lift off. 
that's beautiful. All right, so that works. Uh, so uh, just to kind of recap again, that's beautiful. Okay, so just to kind of recap again, um, usually the number one, as far as I'm reading things, the number one issue is usually with the contacts. Um, power supply is going to be number two, and then any traces or anything is going to be number three. So kind of working your way through, try to start with this, see if it works. If it doesn't work, then jump to the next thing. Um, also, you want, you want to make sure that you do is use some rubbing alcohol on the inside of the games. Don't just blow on them. Make sure that the contacts are all nice and clean and clear. Board looks nice. You're getting any dirt off of it. Uh, if you can, you can see that the uh, screws aren't typical. Uh, the screws actually are back here. And now that I'm thinking about it, oh no, yep, yeah, there we go. Yeah, the screws aren't typical. You have to use a special, uh, it's not a Torx, it's almost like a backwards Torx. I'm not exactly sure what kind of head that is, but uh, you'd have to use something special to pull those off. And you know, if, you could, if I could get inside of this and clean this out, I definitely would do that. But as soon as I can just get there, let's just do that. So you definitely want to make sure that, um, that the contacts are all clean. And you can almost see, and I'm just noticing this just now, you can see this contact right here, because this is the only Genesis that I've only ever owned. So I'm sure that this problem with this contact has been there for a long time. And you can see this contact right here is completely scratched up. And that's probably from that jacked up pin in there. So now that that's all fixed, everything should work out well. And uh, obviously I got the game system to work. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, so that should be about it. If you have any questions or anything, just post in the comments um, and uh, I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.